Hello coders. Synthetic programming here. My girlfriend was just working on a computer science project and she had to write a function that went through a piece of DNA, uh, cut the DNA in one place using a certain restriction enzyme sequence, and then repaired a mutation. And I was thinking about it and I thought, what if I took that program, but I added a bunch more restriction enzymes, and I made it so that people could put in a piece of DNA, it would search through the DNA for all the restriction enzymes that cut in one place, which are super important to genetic engineering. They're called one cut restriction enzymes. And if I find all those, I can show them to the user what the enzymes are, where they cut, and I can also write into the program that it'll make the cuts and show the user what those cuts would look like and uh, how many base pairs would be on each side, all that. So I'm deciding between doing that and working on an assignment that's due in two days. So I kind of think I'm going to write this program right now. Yeah. Also, I totally forgot that some of you guys might not have like a ton of genetic engineering experience or experience with DNA uh, or know much about DNA at all. So while I get ready in real life, I'm going to give you guys a little presentation on DNA. DNA is made up of the four base pairs A, C, G, and T. A connects to T, C connects to G, that is because A and T are complementary and C and G are complementary. Here we have some double-stranded DNA. I've marked the five prime and the three prime ends. DNA is always read from the five prime to the three prime end. So in this case, we would be reading the top strand from left to right and the bottom strand from right to left because the bottom strand always has the opposite orientation as the top. The bottom strand is also complementary to the top strand, which means each base in the bottom is the complement of the base above it in the top strand. I was thinking before writing this that there might be other letter codes besides A, C, G, and T. Sure enough, there are. So I have to program those in as well, which sucks, but I guess I will have to uh, take a little extra time and do that. And I think it'll actually make the program a little more usable for more people uh, if it has those ambiguity codes included. Here is some double-stranded DNA about to be cut by the restriction enzyme EcoRI. This program is called Razor because we're focusing on restriction enzymes cutting the DNA. So here I've marked the five prime and the three prime ends. EcoRI searches along the top of the DNA for the specific sequence GAATTC and when it finds it on that top strand scanning through, it decides, okay, found you, now I'm gonna cut. The cut happens here. As you can see, the cut happens five bases back from the end of the search sequence on the top strand and one base back from the end of the search sequence on the bottom. Now, we can put that in a more readable data format for our program to understand by saying that this enzyme has a search sequence GAATTC and negative five, negative one cuts respectively. In other words, back five on the top strand and back one on the bottom strand. If those numbers were positive, the cuts would be here where these blue lines are. We would be going five bases ahead of the search sequence and then one base ahead on the bottom uh, if we were to switch those numbers around. So this seems like a more intelligent way to store our enzyme information. Uh, Razor is going to be able to analyze a, a file. It'll take a text file in that has just the nucleotides of the top strand of DNA, 5' prime to 3', prime, of course, and it'll tell you which enzymes are one cut enzymes, or in other words, which enzymes only cut the DNA in one place. Search is going to take that same you know file in, and we can search for a sequence like ACGTTGT in this case, and it'll tell us all the locations where that occurs in the DNA. Cut is going to take in that DNA sequence file, and we can also give it a certain restriction enzyme, in this case PSPOMI, and that restriction enzyme will actually cut the DNA in one place. So we type this command and it'll show us the cut that is made by that restriction enzyme. Make report will take that text file, go through all the restriction enzymes that we put in the program, find out which ones only cut it in one place, list them, and then also list all the cuts and show the cuts so that the user can make a decision on which restriction enzyme they want to use. The first file I'm going to write is called enzyme.py. This one is just going to hold the restriction enzyme class and it's going to contain all the data for the restriction enzymes to be used by other files. There's also going to be a function in here called prepare enzymes 
that's going to take the raw enzyme data and convert it into a list of those restriction enzyme objects to make it easier for the rest of my program to run. In dna.py, the next file I'm going to write, I'm going to put a class for nucleotide sequence. In other words, when someone puts in their file, it'll be turned into a nucleotide sequence object. So the strand will be written as a string. Then we can also make the complementary strand, find the length, and this file will also involve all the functions for doing anything like cutting, searching, etc. So that's going to be the bulk of the program. Main.py is just going to hold all of our code for how we're going to interact with the program in terminal. So this is going to be where we actually teach it, you know, when the user types this, do this. And then we're going to have a DNA test.txt, which is just going to be a long uh, text file of about 10,000 A, C's, G's, and T's randomly uh, placed just to uh, do some tests and see if the code all works. I got lucky and found a full list of restriction enzymes on the New England Biolabs website, which actually had the search sequences, the cut information, and the name of the restriction enzyme in each row. So after a few hours of typing and formatting and running a couple little mini Python scripts, I had a pretty good uh, idea of what I wanted the dictionary to look like, and I got the dictionary all written out, holding all of the enzyme data. The rest of enzyme.py didn't take too long to write, it was actually pretty short and straightforward. DNA.py ended up being a little bit longer, and when I say a little bit, uh, the whole file was probably about 400 lines, and a hundred of those lines were actually just the cut method of dna.py. Main.py was really straightforward. I just had to import argv from sys so that I could take in the user's input from terminal, and then I wrote in the rest of the commands so that what pretty much happened was that when the user would type in certain commands, it would call methods on the nucleotide sequence class, which I also imported. So just to show you guys I got everything working, I'm going to type analyze and then the name of the file, which is DNA test.txt, and we will see how it works. So after typing analyze, it's right now searching for restriction enzymes. And after that, it's going to print out all the data. Here it is. So it says, OK, we've got a 10,000 base pair sequence. 205 out of the enzymes recognized the sequence, only 20 of them were one cut restriction enzymes, and then here are those 20. And then we can even see where it cuts the sequence, right? So now, if I was to search in dna.txt, so if I was to change this to search, and then added one of these sequences up here, let's try this one. So we'll do A, C, T, G, G, G. And we're looking for that to appear at 110. There we go. So it appears at 110, which shows that search is working. We can then take this and we can run cut. And we can actually try cutting the DNA with one of these enzymes. Which enzyme do we want to use? Let's try... Uh, this one, DRDI, it looks like. So we'll paste that in there. We'll run that. It'll do the cut, and then it'll print the data down here below of the cut. There we go. So we can see this is the left side of the cut. And we've got 4,353 base pairs to the left. And this is the right side of the cut. And we've got 5,647 base pairs to the right of the cut. So that's pretty cool. So that's all working. Now, the other function that I added in here, remember, was make report. And make report takes a little longer to run, but let's see how it works. Okay, and now that that's done running, if we go over into projects, razor, and then DNA test report.txt, here we have the report. It shows you all the data we got from running Analyze. It shows you all the one-cut restriction enzymes here. And then it actually shows you the cuts that it makes 
with each one of those restriction enzymes. I am going to take that as a success. And with that success, I'm gonna say thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this style of video, let me know down below so I know to keep making them in this way. And uh, yeah, all the code from today's video is available on GitHub. I will link that down in the description so you can go download Razor and try it for yourself or make edits and changes and let me know what you do with it. Uh, yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.